In this video, we will discuss the Synthon approach, a method of retrosynthetic analysis. First, you should make a list of all the reactions you know, and note the key features of those reactions. Some people do this using a table or journal. It's up to you. Consider an SN2 reaction. A nucleophile reacts with the delta positive carbon and the leaving group leaves. This generates a new nucleophile to carbon bond. Now let's analyze the reaction in reverse, a retrosynthetic analysis, which we depict using retrosynthetic arrows. We will use the synthon method to do this. Imagine disconnecting the nucleophile carbon bond in reverse. There are two different places where those red electrons could have come from. They might have originally come from the nucleophile, making the nucleophile negative and the carbon positive. Or it could have been the opposite. The carbon might have started with the electrons and the positive charge with the nucleophile. The species with the positive and negative charges are called synthons. We can label the first pair A and the second pair B. These are not the actual reagents that are used, but just a representation of where the electrons might have come from. Once we have drawn the possible synthon pairs, we ask ourselves whether these possibilities are reasonable by considering known chemical reactions and principles. Different types of chemists have different perspectives on what is considered reasonable. A medicinal chemist in a pharmaceutical company is looking for synthons that come from well-established reagents and reactions. Academic chemists are looking for a challenge, which lets them invent new reactions and solve chemical problems. For synthon pair A, the nucleophile might have been bound to a metal, for example sodium methoxide, which gives a nucleophile with a delta negative and an electrophile with a delta positive charge. The carbon might have been bound to a leaving group. For synthon pair B, the nucleophile might have been bound to a leaving group, making it delta positive, and the CH3 might have been bound to magnesium bromide, making a Grignard reagent. Let's look at a more concrete example. Imagine disconnecting the carbon-carbon bond. We have to think about where those red electrons started from. Here are the two possible synthon pairs. We could either have those red electrons go onto the carbon on the top, which would generate the positive charge on the aromatic ring on the bottom, or those electrons might have gone to the carbon on the bottom, generating the positive charge at the top. We can discount or eliminate option A because we don't have any reaction right now that allows us to put a leaving group onto the aromatic ring and do any type of SN2 reaction. You will learn reactions that will do this in later courses. Also, we haven't seen any reagents that put a metal directly on a carbon next to another electronegative atom. Remember that SN2 on sp2 hybridized carbons is not possible. What seems more probable is to put some sort of metal onto the benzene ring in order to have the benzene ring be the nucleophile. Now we have to consider what this electrophilic portion is going to be. One way to do this is to look at the resonance structure. Notice that this reagent differs only by a proton to a neutral carbonyl. We can imagine another disconnection back that would just be an acid-base reaction to get to the neutral carbonyl. At this point, we have both the starting materials for the reaction. We can go back to the original starting material and imagine a different possible disconnection. Instead of disconnecting between the carbon and benzene ring, we might have disconnected between the central carbon and the methyl on the left-hand side. We can eliminate the first synthon pair because of the non-plausibility of the rightmost reagent. When we draw the next synthon pair, we can see those red electrons being attributed to the carbon on the left and the positive charge to the carbon on the right. This pair is analogous to what we saw above except the nucleophile is now a methyl instead of being a benzene ring. The actual reagent that we can use would be a Grignard reagent, and disconnecting straight back to the carbonyl would be just a different type of ketone. This is exactly analogous to the first type of disconnection that we did, and this process could be repeated for all the different possible disconnections in any given molecule. There are a couple of important principles to keep in mind. First, disconnect near heteroatoms. Those are atoms not equal to carbon or hydrogen. Second, disconnect near the middle of the molecule. As much as possible, if you can, imagine the rectangle in the blue being a molecule, and by disconnecting in the middle and generating equal halves, that symmetry can allow us then to disconnect each half further, all the way back to the starting materials. 
In the forward direction, this makes a more efficient type of synthesis. In summary, when using the synthon approach, disconnect a bond, imagining where the electrons would have come from. Typically, there will be at least two synthon pairs. Choose the most plausible pair based on known chemical reactions and chemical principles to generate the actual starting reagents from that synthon pair. Very often, you will have to disconnect those reagents even further to further simplify the molecule that we are trying to make. Try to disconnect the bonds near heteroatoms because those heteroatoms form the basis of chemical reactions. Disconnect near the middle of the molecule as much as possible in order to have the most efficient type of synthesis. Consider alternate or competing reactions, ones that might interfere with your desired synthetic plan. Consider the order of reactions once you've done this synthon or disconnection approach. You might find there's an order of reactions that avoids alternate or competing pathways. Or you might find a certain order of reactions gives a better regio or stereochemical outcome. Good luck!